Damien Wagner, um, graphic designer, um, live in Los Angeles. I, uh, I'm the lead designer at the Viceroy Hotel Group, which is uh, it's a management group that controls or manages about 13 hotels around the world, and I'm the lead designer there, the only in-house designer there, actually. Um, I do all the collateral and digital assets yeah. for them. I also teach at Otis College of Art and Design. That's quite a story to get to design from music, from art. So when I went to school the first time, I studied uh, painting and printmaking. And when I was a freshman, I started playing music and joined a punk band. And before I knew it, I was touring and just playing all of the United States, putting out records. Still was able to finish my BFA, but every break was playing and going on tour. Every winter break, every summer break. Um, Continued after that, after I graduated, to continue to play music and tour. Did that for most of my 20s and into my 30s. Um, played in different bands, became a songwriter, focused more on songwriting. I moved to Los Angeles in 2008 to pursue songwriting. And also to play in different bands and, and to do some studio work. Um, so I played in Los Angeles in several different bands and in studios from 2008 to about 2014. Um, started reaching my mid-30s and going on tour with bands that were in their mid-20s and started to go, wait, what, wait, this isn't sustainable, like, I've been doing this for 15 and 16 years, it's time to find something different. And my girlfriend, my partner at the time was like, you know what? you would be so good at graphic design. And I said, fuck that. Graphic design is like selling out, fuck that shit. So when I, went to, when I went to art school, all my professors were like, don't ever do design. That is like selling out, they were like super modernist purists, like never do design, you know? And so I sort of had that like, that brainwashing, right? So it's like, please just take one community college like design class with me. I was like, okay, so I went to LACC and I took a class Teacher was terrible, but I learned a lot, and I I got an A. I think she got like a C. <laughs> I, I like aced it. She hated the class. I loved it. Uh, and then I was like, I didn't like the teacher. I didn't like the school, so I found a different school to go to. I went to Pasadena City College. Took a couple more classes, and I was just like, wow, I think I'm actually good at this. Not realizing that since I was in school as a young person and like in bands, all I was doing was making CD covers, album covers, posters, flyers. It's like, I was doing graphic design like my whole life, making t-shirts. When I was skateboarding in high school, I used to like so make t-shirt designs, screen print them, give them to like all my skate crew. And like, I've been doing this like forever. So it was like a natural fit. And when I finally came back to it, it was kind of like a, like a, oh yes, moment. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's, how I got back into graphic design, so I did some studying at community college. Um, became the TA for a couple of the professors there, and was sort of tossing around the idea of going to graduate school, but I was already working in the field, just doing a lot of freelance work, and was like, hey, I don't need to go to grad school. Like, I'm already making money at this, this was great. Um, I did that for a couple of years. Um, I met Gail Swanlin, actually, um, outside of CalArts. She looked at my work. Um, we had a brief discussion about CalArts. Um, but I just, it just stayed in my brain. And I was like, you know what? Just this like slugging away, doing this freelance work is not really that satisfying to me. I want more. And she used to say, like, you know, grad school is like a big decision. It's you want to go there to take time for yourself, to take a break, to learn, to really immerse yourself. And I was like, I think that's what I want to do. So I applied, and I went. I went to CalArts, <laughs> and I just graduated last year. Got out, and I'm, like within one week, I was doing some work um, for Jeff Kaplan and Andrea Fraser in LA. Um, doing some gallery installation, gallery ga graphics, and then I got hired for my full-time position. And then a month later, I uh, got a job at Otis. I'm teaching uh, typography for illustrators. I've also taught uh, motion graphics and printmaking. 
I, you know, I always, when I, when I started TAing when I was in um, community college, I just felt this real sense of like, um, it just felt right to me. It just felt like a calling sounds really corny, but it just felt like it just was a good fit. I wanted to, you know, I, did, I actually did a lot of reflection before I went back to school. Like, what do I want to do with my life? And the one thing that kept coming up was, oh, I need to support myself. I need to, like, make it in the city. But I really want to be able to give back in some way and be a service in some way. And I thought, oh, I could do this. I could do outreach. I could, but but then, then the idea of teaching design kind of came into my mind. Well, I could give back in that way. So... Yeah. That's my, I mean, really, that's my interest. I feel like um, it's a calling in a way, but also that it's a way to give back to um, the community and to younger people, and also to be in that um, context and milieu of, of learning and constantly like learning from them, learning new things so that I can transmit that information to them. Um, I just like that environment. I always have. Yeah. And I think that's a really <clears throat> admirable thing. I mean, like, you know, to teach because you want to continue to learn. I mean, that's that's incredibly important. That's something I discovered about myself through you know design and through art and through music. And like when I started playing music, I didn't I wasn't brought up in a musical household. I just went I want to play in a band. You can meet girls. You can get attention. Give me an instrument. I'm going to learn how to play it. I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then I realized now as an older adult, it's like I've basically done that with everything in my life. Like, oh, I admire this. I want to learn how to do it, I'm going to do it, I want to learn it, I want to learn how to do that, and it's the same thing with design. And now it's with pedagogy and teaching, I'm like, I want to do that, these are the people I admire, um, how do I learn how to do that, I'm just going to jump in and do it. Well, first of all, I'm, I am a child of the West. I mean, that's like the easiest way for me to kind of put like why I stay here. This is the, the city that it holds like a lot of fascination for me. It's also sunny. I need to be in a warm climate. I love the sunshine growing up in the Southwest. But also there's a community here too. And also the work that's being made here is most interesting to me. And then also all the music that I loved comes from Los Angeles too, like in, in all the punk bands we were talking about, Black Flag, Circle Jerks, X, I mean, there's like that lineage of culture and of Los Angeles, I just, there's something about it that I resisted so long when I was younger, but now that I'm finally here, after a decade, it's like I've, I've really grown to embrace it. I, I don't really see myself being anywhere else. Yeah. It's hard to, exp it's hard to, put, hard to explain that. I felt like when I went to Cal Arts, like that's when I finally found, like at 40 years old, like, oh my God, these are like my people. Not all of them, but more than usual. Like I found like my tribe, like, you know, sounds, sounds cliche, but I really finally felt like the family. Like, oh. <coughs> Even being here tonight, I'm like, yeah. yeah, this is like, these are like my people. Yeah, I mean, my early aesthetics come from all that Xerox, all those early Xerox, like, flyers and Raymond Pettibone drawings, and, like, you know, when I was a kid, I would literally, like, the, the first time I saw, like, I can't remember which Black Flag record it was, but I, I, I had a leather jacket and I just copied that drawing onto my jacket, you know, and, like, I just used to draw all those things, and there's something with that and that, that sort of, like, gritty aesthetic, and also just, like, the, the flatness of everything, I mean, not to get, like, academic about, like, you know, Rainer Bannum and, like, the whole, like, post, you know, postmodern city, but there's something about that that just appeals to me, too, and that, I can see that in the work, the sort of the high lows like really embraced here. The car culture, the Xerox flyer, the, you know, um, the different communities coming, I mean, there's also the wild cut, I mean, there's so, I mean, you can't even, I can't even, I can't encapsulate all that. Yeah, um, and I hadn't thought about it in a long time, but and maybe if 
I'm missing some things, maybe you can chime in, Ian. But um, Mind Over Matter was a zine and record store that opened up right near the University of New Mexico where I was going to school um, when I was 18, 19 years old. And I was already into punk and independent kind of music, but they were the first, they, they moved into town, they opened the store, um, they carried, they brought in zines. I was telling you the story of like, the, the owner of Gravity Records come on tour bringing in all the first seven inches that they that they made that they had hand screen printed and they're selling to the store and then I turned around and just said I'm gonna buy all of those like I discovered um, Aaron Comet buses like Zine you know Dishwasher Pete these are all people that I became friends with later when I was in a bands in, in bands and like was on tour and like um, I mean I even like made my own zines at the time um, <laughs> They, I think that they played such an important like role in the that culture of the time in like the mid early nineties in New Mexico. And in fact, that was the one era that I know of, like in Albuquerque, uh, where there was this really like um, really like vivid like music scene, you know, like at the time. And the, you know, the Shins came out of that scene. Like a lot of people, the Drags. It was all this like it's a really fertile time. And then by the time, I think by the time that they closed down and moved away is when things sort of like late 90s when things started like, and everybody started moving away. But um, I hadn't thought about that story in a long time, but they were so important to my development, like as, uh, <laughs> as a person, as like a culturally literate kind of person. Um, the things that I know about, like early um, punk and all that, you know, self-publishing from that time like I know so much about it because of them you know uh. I think there's like an analogical kind of mu making music making graphic design um, I've tried to kind of put my music away for a while and just focus on design and graphic design um, because I feel like the, the analog is too obvious for me that I purposely make myself try to push it away and focus on just the visual making, right? But it's always there. Like music is always influencing whether it's form making, rhythm, uh, you know, pacing in a book. I mean, I can't escape it. It's like in me and then it's in the design, you know? Yeah, <laughs> maybe. That sounds like too, like, sounds a little too fancy. It's a feeling of like never quite finding your niche, or it's like it's a transient quality to it in a way, for me at least. Um, but I have found my like community with you guys, you know? Like, I finally found that. After I went to Cal after like eight years of living here or seven years of living here, and I've been here over ten years, but it wasn't until I went to school and started to meet these folks is where I finally felt like, oh, I'm supposed to be here. Before that, I was like playing gigs, doing this, doing that, being kind of like cool, kind of accepted, kind of not, kind of not cool enough, kind of too old, or kind of too much this, or you know. But when I went to school and sort of like met Gail and Brian and you know Yasmin and all these folks like I, that's when I felt like oh wow like these are these are my people